Hello everyone and welcome to another Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition tier list video. It's me, Jimmy James 59 and today we're going to be talking about the Cavalry Archer, an oft-discussed unit uh, with a lot of different opinions out there in the community. Before we get started, I'd say if you like the video, uh, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot as I'm uh, getting this channel going. And if you ever want to come drop by, hang out on my Twitch stream, I'll put a link to, uh, to where you can find me on Twitch and do that. So we're going to be talking about the Cavalry Archer, and today I want to do this video just a little bit differently. There's actually a lot to talk about with this unit, and so I really want to get us set up correctly. So the first thing, why create a tier list for Cavalry Archers? Well, there's a few reasons. The first reason is that it requires the most upgrades of any unit in the game, so it's very powerful if you can get there. However, because it can be very powerful... Few civilizations have access to all these upgrades. So what that means is there is a lot of variation among cavalry archers across civilizations. So there are a lot of points of comparison here. And lastly, there have been a lot of recent buffs during the past year, particularly the last six, seven months or so. And this has increased their usage not only on the ranked ladder, but also in tournaments such as the Red Bull Wololo, uh, tournaments featuring the Empire Wars game mode, uh, shout out to Red Bull, and also in King of the Desert 4 more recently, hosted by MemTV, uh, shout out to Mem and uh, what he's doing there, and all the players and all the individuals who are casting these games. So, their usage, right, the usage of Cavalry Archers uh, has really gone up, and so it's worth talking about uh, it's worth talking about what we're seeing and uh, and thinking about how they relate to one another. So, what are we going to consider for the Cavalry Archer tier ranking? Well, we're going to consider things like, and this is roughly uh, uh, ranked in sort of an ordinal fashion from top to bottom. We're going to be looking at whether they have Bracer, uh, Bloodlines to increase their HP, Thumb Ring to increase their firing rate and their accuracy, Parthian Tactics, uh, which gives extra armor and adds a very important uh, bonus damage against Spearmen. Civilization bonuses that affect the cost or performance of the unit. And economic bonuses that help the Cavalry Archer line, particularly Wood and Gold. Food bonuses will be a bit less of a priority, though they'll still factor in. And lastly, uh, the Blacksmith Armor Upgrades. It's worth noting we will not be considering unique units that are in the Cavalry Archer class. So Mangadai, Camel Archers, we're going to keep those out of this video because they make the comparisons extremely messy. So we're going to be talking about the Cavalry Archer and its upgrade, the Heavy Cavalry Archer. Now, because this unit has so many upgrades and therefore we see so much variation, we're going to need a bit of an expanded tier list here. And so what I want to do is give you a rationale of what is going into this tier list here. So I want to give a description of the tiers, right? So we're going to go S, A through, and then A through F in our tier list. S tier is best of the best. These units are fully upgraded, and they often have very strong civilization bonuses that push you to the Cavalry Archer line. And if, say, an upgrade is missing then that civilization's got to have uh, really, really strong bonuses that not only make up for that, but also make it more viable. In the A tier, we also uh, uh, we think of these units as being very strong. They're either fully upgraded or they have some bonuses that make their usage more appealing. They're just not quite on the S tier level, but still very strong. B tier level, the, the cavalry archers here are good. They possess really only minor flaws, um, and, uh, you know, they're usable in a lot of different circumstances. You really shouldn't be afraid to, to go for these units. Once we get into the C tier, we get into units that are still good, but it's really difficult to optimize their performance because they're missing at least one important upgrade. They're generally usable, but they're just not going to perform at a highest level 
as a B tier, A tier, or S tier unit. Now, once we get into D tier, now we're talking about a unit that is highly situational. Uh, it generally unadvised to make them unless the matchup really dictates it because they miss critical upgrades and they don't really have bonuses that up compensate for their units deficiencies. The E tier, uh, <laughs> Cav Archers here are going to be borderline unusable um, and uh, I would never recommend going for them. And then in the F tier, this is our utter failure tier. Um, here, civilizations, most of them can't even train cavalry archers, and those that can might as well never do it because it would be such a waste of resources. So, right, now we've set up our tier list, right, and let's finally, let's get, okay, and let's get into the video. So I'm just going to go ahead. Pull up my notes here. Yes, I took some notes before doing this. And, well, let's start off with the Aztecs. Aztecs are an easy F tier. They lack the Cavalry Archer line entirely. Easy day. All right, now we get into the Berbers. Berbers are going to wind up in the C tier. Um... Cavalry Archers for the Berbers are still a pretty decent unit, but you're missing Parthian Tactics. That's and, and that's it, but Parthian Tactics is a really huge upgrade. Halbs and Siege Ram are a very common strategy against Berbers, and so not having, Parth having Parthian Tactics can really hurt you as you're trying to deal with Halberdiers. Berbers, uh, often you have a lot of cavalry, so you're going to run up against Halberdiers, and man, missing that really hurts. So a C tier, generally usable, they're just not optimal. Okay, now we get into the Bohemians. Bohemians are going to wind up in the F tier. Um, they don't have access to them. Easy day, right? Okay, now let's go with the Britons. Britons are going to find themselves squarely in the E tier. <laughs> Britons are known for their archers, but their cavalry archers are not what they're known for. You don't get bloodlines, you don't get thumb ring, and you don't get Parthian tactics. Really the only thing that you have going for you is your archery ranges work faster. In theory, you could create them more quickly, but... You're missing so many upgrades. They're still not going to perform very well, and it's probably just a waste of resources at that point. All right, moving on to the Bulgarians. And Bulgarians might surprise you. They might astound you to find themselves in the B tier. Yes, hear me out on this. Bulgarians are only missing the last blacksmith armor upgrade, right? This is really important because that means that they have they have everything else, including Parthian Tactics, that allows them to really easily kill Halberdiers. And that's going to be the bane of the existence of their Hussars, which is a unit that often accompanies Cavalry Archers, especially in Imperial Age. So, the fact that you can really help your Hussars out doing that bonus damage, gotta give, right? You gotta create a new tier for for this kind of cavalry archer because if we compare it with the Berbers, the Bulgarian cavalry archer can perform a role in a way much better than the Berber cavalry archer here. So, Bulgarians winding up in the B tier. All right. Next, we're going to see the Burgundians, and the Burgundians are going to find themselves in the E tier alongside the Britons. You don't get Bloodlines, you don't get Thumb Ring, Parthian Tactics, or the last armor upgrade. Uh, these, these Cavalry Archers are just not going to last at any point in the game. Alright, next up we have in our uh, I think staying in our E tier, yes. Alright, we're going to have 
the Burmese. The Burmese are missing the last two armor upgrades from the blacksmith and thumb ring. Now you do get Parthian tactics, but that means you only have three pierce armor in Imperial Age. And because you miss thumb ring, you can't hit the broadside of a barn. This is not going to work out. If you're Burmese, stay away from cavalry archers. All right, moving on to the Byzantines. The Byzantines are going to wind up in the D tier. You miss bloodlines, you miss Parthian tactics, and you don't really have any eco bonuses to help you get there. So you have to really be in a, in a pinch uh, to, to use that unit. So uh, highly recommended against. All right, uh, Celts. Celts are going to wind up in the E tier. Uh, you don't get Bloodlines, you don't get Thumb Ring, you don't get Parthian Tactics, you don't get the Last Armor, you don't get a lot. Um, it is true that the Celts have a an increased wood gathering bonus, but by the time you start to get to the age when you're making Cavalry Archers, uh, and Castle Age, and Imperial Age, that's when that bonus is going to start to slow down compared to other sieves. And let's face it, they just don't perform very well, so... So Celts are going to wind up in the E tier. All right, next up on our list, we have the Chinese. Chinese are going to go into the C tier. Uh, you're it, Again, it's similar to Berbers. You're only missing Parthian tactics. So your CA can be quite usable. And not only that, you do get cheaper technologies that enable you to get into your cavalry archers faster. But the reason it can't make B tier is because missing Parthian tactics means that it can't perform that halberdier pike-killing role that, say, a Bulgarians and uh, other civilizations can perform. So, pretty good, but it's not going to get us there. All right, next on our list is Cumans. Cumans are going to wind up in the D tier. Look, Cumans miss Bracer, otherwise they're fully upgraded. However, Missing Bracer is huge, right? You gain attack and range from Bracer. You don't have that with Cumans. It is true they have the technology Step Husbandry that allows them to train Cavalry Archers faster, but that is a lot of gold to spend on a unit that takes a lot of upgrades. Typically, you see Step Husbandry used for uh, your Light Cavalry line, either Hussars and Step Lancers. So, uh, Cumans are going to wind up in the D tier very situational. Next up, Ethiopians. Also going to wind up in the D tier. You're missing Bloodlines and Parthian Tactics. Your economic bonuses are decent, but Thumb Ring and Ballistics, the kind of technologies that, you, that your Cavalry Archers sorely need, they're really too expensive to be affected by these technologies. Because again, as the game goes on, the Ethiopian economic bonus gets pretty watered down, so... That's uh, that's not really going to be affecting us as much here. Okay, Franks. Franks are going to wind up in the E tier. Right? You get a bit of an HP bonus, though it's not as good as Bloodlines, which, you know, you would be missing, so you're not getting compensated uh, equally. And then you're missing Bracer. You're missing Thumb Ring, Parthian Tactics, and the Last Armor. Honestly, if it weren't for getting a little bit of that HP bump, I'd put them in F tier. Um, so they're pretty bad. All right, next up we have the Goths, and, you know, Goths may actually surprise you a little bit. Goths are going to go into the D tier. Uh, you're missing Thumb Ring and Parthian Tactics, and that's a bad about it. So, now those are both two important upgrades. So, you know, Goth Heavy Cavalry Archers should have some staying power, but they're going to be inaccurate and inexpensive with no real eco bonus. So uh, use at your own peril. Okay, next up we have the Huns. And the Huns are going to wind up in the S tier. Huns are our first S tier civilization. And I'm about to tell you why. Now first, let's put all of our cards here out on the table. They are missing the last armor upgrade. However... The Huns get incredible resource savings. Your Cavalry Archers are minus 10% in cost minus in Castle Age, minus 20% cost in Imperial Age. And not only that, but not having to build houses gives you a wood bonus that really starts to hit its stride in Castle Age 
and improves your villager efficiency because you don't have villagers out there building houses. Huns are one of the two civilizations that can actually put enough archery ranges down to mass cavalry archers and field them considerably to match crossbow numbers in Castle Age. And then in Imperial Age, a Hun heavy cavalry archer is more or less the cost of an arbalist. You're only costing three more gold, a handful more wood, and yet you have nearly double the HP, more attack, and you're a lot faster. Huns, S tier. Easy decision. Incas, going to wind up in the F tier. Uh, you like cap cavalry archers entirely. Moving on. Indians. Indians are going to wind up in the A tier. You tend to see Indians play cavalry archers a lot. They are fully upgraded. And the Indian economic bonus, it's a food bonus. Uh, you know, this is something that moderately helps your production just because you get a lot of villagers that you're generating more resources. And so that, that does help. The Sultan's technology can marginally help to increase some gold perhaps later on in the game. But uh, this is, this generally doesn't get researched till much later, if at all. So for all practical intents, it's not really helping us here. All right, next up on our list, we have Italians. And Italians are going to wind up in the E tier. Now, you're only missing Parthian tactics. And, oh yeah, you're also missing... Heavy Cavalry Archer entirely. That's horrible. Uh, not going to be a unit that you're going to be able to use. I suppose that you might say they're fully upgraded in Castle Age, but you have no real bonuses. And the Cavalry Archer is so expensive that you're really saving it so that you can get to that nice late game composition. So Italians, E tier, don't go there. All right, next up we have Japanese. Japanese are going to wind up in the A tier alongside Indians. Look, your heavy cavalry archers are fully upgraded, and the wood saving bonus that you get on your resource buildings can be nice uh, in order to save resources earlier in the game. It really tapers off, though. It probably starts tapering off around the time you get to Castle Age, so this probably just helps you get those initial ranges down to field that initial cavalry archer army. Uh, but hey, they are fully upgraded, and that's something that not a lot of civilizations on this tier list can say. All right, next up we have the Khmer, and the Khmer are gonna wind up in D tier. Khmer are only missing thumb ring, right? But now, thumb ring vastly increases the firing rate and accuracy against stationary targets. In fact, I've actually heard Harris say, uh, I think uh, in during King of the Desert 4, uh, during casting, by the way, shout out to Harry, he has a great channel, I recommend you follow him on YouTube and on Twitch. And I've heard Harris say that thumb ring is even more important than ballistics when you're up against knights, which is a common power unit you often see on the field. So missing thumb ring is really crucial and also really differentiates Khmer cavalry archers from the cavalry archers that are in C tier, like Berbers and Chinese. So because of that, you gotta go into D tier, even if perhaps they may be the strongest or one of the strongest in D tier, but but I wouldn't brag about that, come on. All right, next up we have the Koreans. Koreans are going to see themselves also wind up in the D tier. You're missing bloodlines and Parthian tactics. You don't have any real bonus that helps you get to them. Easy decision. All right, next up we have the Lithuanians. The Lithuanians are going to go into C tier. They're like Berbers. You're only missing Parthian tactics, right? Easy day. C tier. All right, next up we have the Magyars. Magyars are going into the S tier. Now, this was one I really had to think about. Um, what you're getting with Magyars is their Imperial Age technology, Recurve Bow, gives them plus one attack and range. Right, and that's really the only bonus they have. However, this bonus is massive. Right? You now have the range of an Arbalist, and you get an extra attack out of it. So, Magyar Cavalry Archers are insanely good. You can attack from a long distance away 
which greatly increases your survivability, and you're doing more damage, uh, thinning out units. I mean, the Magyar Cav Archer is the best fire support unit in terms of cavalry archers by a mile, and is a major part of their army. Uh, even though they're generic in Castle Age, I think you got to give it to them S tier. All right, next up we have the Malay, and Malay are going to wind up in the D tier. Uh, you're missing bloodlines and Parthian tactics. Um, you know, you don't have really any bonus, right? Kind of like Koreans. All right, next up we have the Malians. And Malians are going to find themselves in E tier. You're missing Bracer and Parthian tactics. Uh, that's a no-go. All right, Mayans, don't, get ca don't even get Cavalry Archers. Easy F tier. Mongols are going to find themselves in the A tier. You are missing the last armor upgrade. So uh, these bad boys are not fully upgraded. But the Mongol Civilization is a bonus where all Cavalry Archers fire faster. This is very nice and does make it a pretty good fire support unit. Uh, missing the last armor upgrade from the blacksmith, not as, it doesn't hurt you quite as much just because cavalry archers should be at the back of your line providing fire support or uh, raiding tactics, doing hit and runs, and not taking a lot of damage. So you really want that attack, you really want that range. So that's enough to get them into A tier, but again, having the, t the faster firing attack and why this is different, say, from Huns, is that Huns have the cost effectiveness to really be able to mass these uh, these units up. And two, the Mongols just don't get a good eco bonus that helps you tech into Cav Archers, whereas Huns don't have to make houses and they save a lot of wood. So that's why Mongol Cavalry Archers are going to be A tier, Huns S tier. All right, next up we move to the Persians. And, you know, the Persians are actually going to find themselves... Hanging out in the D tier, surprisingly, Persians are only missing Bracer, right? However, missing Bracer is massive, right? Increases your damage and range by a lot. And cavalry archers already don't have that long of a range, so anything that puts you closer to the enemy is bad news for your cavalry archer, because these are expensive units that require a lot of upgrades, don't want to see those upgrades and all that investment die on the battlefield, not able to dish out the damage, so D tier. All right, next up we have the Poles. And Poles are going to find themselves sitting in the E tier. Um, the problem is you miss Parthian Tactics and the last armor upgrade. That means you have two Pierce Armor with Bloodlines. That's not going to work at all. So E tier for... The, for the Poles. Alright, next up, Portuguese. And, you know, Portuguese are going to wind up in the D tier. They're missing Parthian tactics, and they can't even train the heavy cavalry archer. So wait, how do they wind up in D tier? Why aren't they chilling in the E tier, even the F tier? Well, the Portuguese have a civilization bonus where all their military units cost minus 20% gold. Right? So that means you get fully upgraded cavalry archers in Castle Age that are minus 20% gold. That's a pretty nice bonus, which means that they can be very useful in a pinch, but you do have to move off of them eventually. The faster researching of technologies can help you create some power spikes, so some early Castle Age play with uh, a few cavalry archers for some hit and run. There's some potential for that, but... It's really not going to get you anything better than D tier. So, uh, because you're missing missing the heavy cavalry archer is a major major flaw. All right, next up we have the Saracens, and Saracens are going to find themselves in the A tier. Saracens, well, you know, they're, hey, they're fully upgraded, and that's something that none of the other cavalry archers in B tier and below can say for themselves. So. You got to give them credit, and having that extra, I mean, going from four to six pierce armor, I mean, that's a 50% increase in pierce armor. 
That is nothing to sneeze at. Now, you know, Saracens have a bonus to their markets where there's less of a trade fee they have to pay to uh, to exchange resources at the market. That's seen often a lot more with crossbow play. And is not something that I think tends to come into factor with cab archers, but it's something that could possibly help you. So maybe a modest eco bonus to help you get there. All right, next up we have Sicilians. Sicilians are going to go into the E tier. You missed Parthian Tactics, Thumb Ring, the last armor upgrade. You're missing Heavy Cavalry Archer completely. This is not going to work. All right, Slavs. Slavs are going to also go in the E tier. Uh, you miss Bracer, Thumb Ring, Parthian Tactics. Uh, you know. Yeah, this is not good. Not good at all. All right, Spanish. Spanish are actually going to find themselves in the C tier. You don't see heavy cavalry archers with Spanish much, but hey, you are only missing Parthian tactics. And not only that, but you don't have a gold, a gold cost on your blacksmith upgrades. That might help you research some of those technologies like Bracer, Bodkin, etc. You know, if, you, if you're trying to tech into... The unit uh, later in the game though if you're trying to take into this really expensive unit late in the game you're probably not going to have enough resources to get there all right next we have the tatars tatars are going to wind up in the s tier oh you beautiful tatars let me tell you about these guys not only are they fully upgraded but you also have the silk armor technology giving you an extra pierce armor so Tatar Heavy Cavalry Archers have 7 Pierce Armor. That is a lot of staying power. But not only that, you get free Thumb Ring and free Parthian Tactics. Two very crucial upgrades to the unit, and you get them instantly and for free. Your Cavalry Archers have plus 2 line of sight. And you're... At, so, I mean, this is already a fantastic unit. Uh, other than Huns, it's probably the only civilization that can really afford them yeah, to field them in mass and castle age and you, your economic bonus where you your town centers spawn sheep that can help you uh, perhaps delay some farms but the thing with cavalry archers is it's really often to see uh, three range one TC play for uh, at least early in the mid castle age with uh, this civilization so uh, you know, it, it can help you a bit, but again, it's a food eco bonus, so it's pretty modest here. So, but still, nevertheless, great cavalry archers. Uh, they not only they not only perform well, but they're also uh, viable because of the free upgrades. All right, next up, the Teutons. <sighs> Teutons are gonna have to go right into the F tier. They're even worse than E tier, and I'm gonna tell you why. You're missing bracer, thumb ring. Parthian Tactics, the last armor upgrade, husbandry, and you don't even get heavy cavalry archers. Stay away from this unit. I can't imagine any scenario where you would make any any sizable quantity of this unit for any purpose. Stay away. All right. Next up, we have the Turks and. Turks are going to go into S tier. Uh, Turks might be, Turks might be the weakest of the S tier sieves. I think you could probably float them, maybe into A tier. But right, they're fully upgraded, and their castle age technology Sapahi gives gives them extra HP. These bad boys have a hundred HP at the end of the day, and. They have a gold mining bonus, which does make it easier to get them out on the field in larger number. Um, the reason I'd say that they're maybe some of the weakest of the S-tier cavalry archers is just having more HP is not as useful as, say, doing more damage or having a cost reduction, so you're actually saving gold instead of using up gold faster, Um you know, when you compare it to the Tatars, Tatars have free technologies in addition to their uh, staying power, uh, and then, you know, other bonuses as well. So, you know, 
Still a fantastic cavalry archer sieve, but uh, you know, but per perhaps if I if I if I were going crazy and making more tiers, I'd put Turks in a tier all by themselves. Maybe call it A plus S minus, but we're not going to do that here. All right, next up we have the Vietnamese. Vietnamese, they're going to go in the B tier, right? The Bulgarians are are going to be lonely no longer. Vietnamese do miss Parthian tactics and get all the other upgrades. But the way that Vietnamese compensate is that all of their archer units have plus 20% HP. That means in Imperial Age, these heavy cavalry archers have 92 HP total. And that's pretty darn good. But because the extra HP is also occurring in Castle Age, you have a really strong unit that's not only fully upgraded, but has extra HP. So Castle Age... CA with Vietnamese can be quite strong. So that's enough. They can perform a perhaps not a, a different role, but they just have more staying power than even the C tier civs. Uh, and that's and, and are even better in Castle Age. So that's gonna wind up getting them into the B tier. But missing Parthian tactics has to keep them out of the A tier because it's such a crucial technology to deal with halberdiers. All right, last and well, probably least, unfortunately, are going to be the Vikings in the F tier. Uh, you know, boy, you're missing Thumb Ring, Parthian Tactics, Husbandry, Bloodlines, and the Heavy Cavalry Archer upgrade. This is a bad unit. I guess it's the only, well, I don't know. It's, it's pretty bad because at least the Teutons have... Bloodlines? You don't even have bloodlines with Vikings, though. You do get Bracer of the Last Armor. I don't know. We're in such a awful space with that unit that for with Viking Cavalry Archers that we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. So And so that's our tier list. So you know when you look at this tier list, right? And just it's kind of reflecting on this here. For most civilizations, cavalry archers are simply not all that usable right we got a lot of civilizations here in d tier and in e tier and in f tier right not very usable for most civilizations now and when and when we go look from the s tier to the c tier we still see an incredible amount of variation where your s tier and your a tier civs cavalry archers have a staying power or a viability that you just don't see necessarily uh, at the C tier, uh, and our B tier is only two civilizations, but again, it's worth, right, we're thinking about what the unit can do, and there actually is a pretty, there's a noticeable functional difference between cavalry archers in the B tier and the C tier, so, um, you know, Bulgarians and Vietnamese are just going to have to, uh, you know, play tennis or other sports that only two people can play at a time. Well, I guess uh, tennis, you can play doubles, can't you? All right, it's a bad metaphor. Right? They're going to have to hang out on their own, though, regardless. Right? One-on-one -on -one basketball, something like that. Anyways, uh, bad metaphors aside, uh, I suppose that's always a sign that you need to uh, come to the end of the tier list video. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I actually had a lot of fun going through this and thinking about uh, thinking about this unit. And uh, you have your own thoughts. Uh, you disagree with some of my ratings. Uh, you know, let me know in the comments below, and uh, and I'm sure we'll have a, a a nice civil cordial discussion because the Age of Empires 2 community is the best gaming community out there. There, I said it. But anyways, we're going to conclude this video. Uh, again, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitch. And with that, I'll see you on the ladder. Peace.